Okay, hello folks, welcome back to the channel. So I thought I'd do the four month update for you. Uh, believe it or not, it is four months. It seems like a lot longer. Uh, we've had a lot of problems with this tank, as you know, if you've been following the videos. It seems like sort of eight, nine months, but uh, yeah, it's only four months from the very start when we transferred all the livestock from the Max Nano over. Now, like I said, if you've been following the videos, you'll know the nightmare I've been with this tank with a lot of coral loss but I think we're, uh, we're on the right track now the tank is uh, finally turning around and really taking off so I'm really happy uh, the water's get, getting clearer by the day naturally that's with no UV steriliser I nearly give in and put a UV system on to try and clear the bacterial bloom but it's naturally going clear which is what I wanted a naturally clear water and um, we know that biologically it's very balanced and uh, and happy. I think the major thing with this tank that's that's helped is adding all the new, very mature, <coughs> uh, ten year plus live rock. Uh, that's sort of really given me a head start and uh, sort of put me forward in time, if you know what I mean. So it's say it's only four months from the very start, but. Tank maturity wise, I would say it's probably near the year marker, but you can't really go by that. So, we've done uh, another ch big change to the tank. Now, as you know, we're running the Kessel A360Xs over the tank. And some, although I love Kessel, and it's my uh, first port call for lighting a reef tank, uh, it's the first time I've used these 360Xs. Now, they have a very wide angle on them, 130 degree. Uh, spread angle on each unit and where I sit just to the left of the tank my sort of workstation office station where my computer is and everything um, as I'm sitting in the, my office chair you do get a really bad glare straight from the, the, the LED um, straight into your eyes which is really annoying so Kessel like with everything everything's an option and uh, you have to buy everything separately and they do the 55 degree uh, angled lenses which sort of narrows the beam right down tapers it right down now the good thing with that is it increases the light intensity within the tank so you get obviously you're going to get more par so the, the, the light's more focused now onto the rock scape and you don't brilliantly don't get the glare in your eyes now i'm going to take the camera off the tripod and show you around the tank i've got a new addition in the tank which is going to be the, one of the feature fish in here um i don't know if you've noticed it on screen already but uh really chuffed with uh, with the purchase of the new the new fish so i'll get the camera off the tripod bear me two secs so i'm also uh experimenting with the lighting uh schedule for filming actually because it's film trying to film a reef tank if you if you any of you existing youtubers know it's, it's an absolute nightmare we're filming with a uh, samsung galaxy s20 this is on 100 percent whites with a uh, yellow filter. So first thing, I've just put some food actually into my new gadget I've actually uh, just made myself, this feeding tube here, which is a, a great idea. I've been wanting to do this for a while. It's basically just a mag float cleaner magnet. And I've uh, puttied on a, a pipe where the food just sits in there and dissolves very slowly and comes out the pipe and into the flow. Um, yeah, really chuffed with that. It's made, you know, all the food doesn't go down the overflow, which is a big problem. So you, with pellets, it's really good to just sprinkle your spectrum pellets in there. So usually you have to throw them hard at the surface and sort of 60% of them go down. 40% 40, 40 of them float around the surface annoyingly and a lot of them go down the overflow, which you don't want. But with this method, I've done what, uh, the same sort of thing with Corey Sank, my son's tank upstairs. So yeah, they're working out really good, so chuffed with that. So yeah, the Kessels, these are the lenses. They just magnetize on. Stupidly expensive, like with anything Kessel, the 70 quid. But it's made a big difference because you don't get any glare now. And actually, this is the first time I've tried filming and you don't get any glare into the camera either. So yeah. Chuff. But anyway, fish-wise, there we go. We've had to go for one. It's one of my favourite tangs of all time. The classic regal tang or blue tang. And her name is Penny because she is the size of a penny. She's been in about five, six days now. 
and what a character. Really happy, always out. She's gonna be great. Now obviously, she's gonna get big and it's gonna take probably a year and a half, two years, and she might have to come out uh, and obviously have to rehome her, but she's gonna be the feature fish in here, I think. She's really great, she's eating on everything. Say an absolute pig. I've just put some uh, just some marine mix, frozen cube in, but she's on spectrum pellets, which is good. Which has got all the algae in it, and Julian Sprung's algae sheet. She feeds off that as well, so that's great. So it's an important thing for the tanks to get their algae because it's their main diet. But we hope that she just eats anything. All the other fish are doing good. So running through the fish, we've got this big yellow chorus wrasse, peacock wrasse, Midas blenny. So most of these come from the other tank. Obviously the two clownfish in the back. And we've got an algae blenny. If you can focus. Don't usually eat, see him eating much, but he's got a big fat belly. So he's obviously getting enough. And just there, you see one of the convict tank, uh, convict gobies. There's two in here. This is this, this one's layer just down in here underneath this rock. And you've got the other one that is really bold and always out here yeah. it's just something a little bit different and i do like different fish i've never had these i know they will get quite big so they're only quite small at the moment this one's markings are still horizontal but it will change more like this one some more sort of vertical lines all the way through this one's still changing obviously as well but the tank itself, parameters wise, really stable now. Uh, we've just purchased a HANA checker for phosphate, so you can dial our phosphates right in. And um, so the tank's really taking off. Coraline. So this is four months growth of Coraline. This tank was, you know, the back wall was completely clear four months ago. So this is what's speckled up in four months. And the rock work, I think what's really helped is this new mature live rock. She's covering, you know, very thick layered coralline algae. It's just spreading everywhere now. All the corals are really happy and getting better by the day. The old piss all puffed up. So this isn't the best lens to use to get the coral pop, but it seems to be uh, quite a good light and filter to use. Just the orange letter, sorry, the yellow lens. But all the corals, we've just started to glue on some GSP on the back wall here. I've done that this morning, actually, that's why it's not out. So we're gonna do a big GSP wall. And it, before anyone asks, because I get this, this is the most commonly asked question, how do you get your GSP to stick to the back wall or the back glass? And it's super glue. Um, you don't use too much super glue, because it, it, it's weirdly, the, the less you use it, it tends to stick better but just persevere, it will stick. And once it starts growing and spreading, uh, you're laughing really, it will spread right the way up. And wherever you glue it, it will grow up. So position it right, nice and low down, unless you don't want it too low down. So wherever you glue it, it will grow up. But yeah, coral wise, we're doing really well. My existing pulse coral is starting to bounce back. So that's a good indicator that uh, everything is on, on form. I just run through my parameters as I always do. I've actually got to redo these uh, zoas actually onto a dedicated rock. That's another job. I'm going to reposition corals and get the Montipora plates in the positions where I think they should uh, should go. So they're not going to be shade out all the new coral frags we're going to put in here. So we, within the next few weeks, we're going to start putting coral frags in here because we're definitely ready. Um, water parameters are starting from the top, obviously salt, 35 parts per thousand, temperature about 26 degrees, and alkalinity being, I feel, the most important one. We're running at 8.3, calcium 460, 470, magnesium 1440, nitrates are at 4 ppm, and phosphates are at 0 0.027. 
So near 0 0.03, which is sort of the minimum I want to run really. The tank does like to be between sort of 0 0.04 and 5 really, is where I want to run it. But now we've got the HANA checker, we know uh, we've got that figure accurate and we know where we are with it. So we can sort of experiment with going sort of, high, sort of higher and lower and, and see what's what. But yeah, thanks Stephanie. Uh, Definitely coming on for. Cleaner shrimp. Clean up crew wise in here, we've got this cleaner shrimp. We've got two Mexican turbo snails. There's one right in the center here. Um, where else? We've got a peppermint shrimp and we have got a sand sifting starfish in here. Uh, and that seems to be keeping the sand bed really nice and to try it's clear actually which is just the top of it there the emote is about all the time I tend to overfeed it a little bit to make sure there's uh, enough for him to to feed on because it's they're notorious for clearing the sand bed and then dying I'm just trying to think what else is new so the sump's running really well. I've turned the skimmer off at the moment just to stop the air bubbles so we can film better. But the sump's running, running really well. First chamber, 100 micron filter sock. Lots of live rock there. This is skim chamber. Last chamber with all our biological max spec bio bricks and our bio home. This is a small bag of carbon hanging. And the heater in there, return pump. And single line Hidosa using Tropic Marinzol for Reef. This stuff's brilliant. I'm going to do a separate video. I know I keep saying that, but yeah, it's, it's really good. It keeps everything really, really stable and also doses in all your trace elements as well. So, yeah, really chuffed. So, I'm finally seeing the benefit of the 360Xs now. So, before we only had one on the system and we had big bacterial blooms, but now. We've got two with the uh, narrow beam reflectors, which has made a massive difference. So I can actually sit in my chair without being blinded down here. Look, as before, it's just, you really have to duck your head down to sort of see in the tank nicely without being blinded. We do need still need to uh, sort the flow out in the tank. We're actually running the return pump on virtually full chat, which is about, yeah, five and a half, six thousand litres an hour just to get some more flow. But we do need to get another wave maker. Probably go maybe with the Red Sea one is, uh, is probably what I'm going to go for. Yeah, so I'm just going to uh, end the video with the filming through the tank. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up. Got loads of content coming up. So smash that like, that really helps me out guys. So until next time, I'll catch you later.